come back with another cunning exhaust guide finally this one is about dragon powder which has been around the game since i remember by the way before proceeding dragon powder doesn't come from dragons this powder seems to have kitten origins and it's a mixture that only the bravest dare to use in their crafts also it's enough to cause damage if combined with other ingredients and it may be linked to sorcery and used by alchemists in the past now how can you get dragon powder you can get this volatile powder by learning the fireball cauldron knowledge at level 15 it is a bit expensive for you to obtain if you are still around this level though because you are gonna need a huge amount of ingredients especially steel fire you need about 100 steel fire 2 demon blood 50 crystals and 10 brimstones inside of your fireball cauldron to get one unit of dragon powder if you're playing on a session or a server with a crafting speed multiplier on the default value then dragon powder is going to be crafted slowly however if you have an alchemist troll inside of your fireball cauldron the crafting speed will be faster or you can always use in your later gameplay a giant's fireball cauldron instead you can also use a precision fireball cauldron to make the process of crafting dragon powder much cheaper now about the resources required to make dragon powder where can you find brimstone? if you are playing in the exile lands map you can find brimstone inside several caves like the sinner's refuge the executioner's entrance or even the galleman's tomb also near spotter's squad at the shattered springs there are a couple pointy rocks there out of the noxious gas bring a sandstorm mask if you have one you can also find brimstone underwater at the very eastern side of the map if you are playing the all of Sipta map expansion instead you can find brimstone more easily near vaults in the all of dusk and at the barons for example around the Sipta's tower even in some lay shrines and even in a few other random locations about crystal you can find it inside specific caves from the exalands like the cavern of fiends scuttler's shortcut enemans grotto and at the passage crystal nodes and bits are scattered through the isle of sipta map and you'll find them more easily nearby vaults entrances and around lay shrines together with a few other places to get demon blood this one may be a little more challenging to find because you have to slay demonic creatures as the best way of getting it demon blood is mainly used for alchemical purposes when i talk about demonic creatures it can be from really literally demonic ones to undead certain undead okay skeletons do not work if you go for undead hyenas some of them give you demon blood however undead kappas don't give you this kind of blood dragons give you demon blood but they are kind of tricky to kill those giant evil birds also give you this and you eventually through time figure out which ones give you or not alternatively you can also use a fleet press to get demon blood if you have corrupted livers or demonic creature heads for example if you use a cleaver on bad demons demonic spiders or even green or red dragons you can add their heads to the fleet press and smash them to get some resources including this blood to get steel fire it's easy it's just not easy to get 100 for each dragon powder but still pretty possible if you start 
at an early stage of your gameplay to collect this kind of ingredient. Capture an alchemy scroll or build a better fireball cauldron to craft still far faster or decrease the dragon powder crafting cost. This is a volatile mixture, very known among players, as you'll need to craft it as soon as you can to upgrade your base and gear, with two tar and one brimstone, because you also need to craft steel bars, okay? With two tar and one brimstone, you can easily make steel fire at any fireball cauldron after reaching level 15. What can you do with dragon powder? Well, there are not many uses for this uncommon substance, however, it's still a very valuable resource for several players, especially to make explosives or even to deepen your sorcery knowledge. Explosive arrows are some of the few things that you can make with dragon powder. You can obtain about 10 explosive arrows at a time at the carpenter's bench with 1 dragon powder, 5 tar, 4 feathers and an iron head arrow. But make sure you have learned beforehand the specialist ammunition tree knowledge to unlock the explosive arrows. You need to be at level 49, so this is something that you cannot learn at an early stage of a game, but still worth all your efforts to reach to this level, alright? The explosive arrows have different purposes that make them different from most other existing arrows in Conan Exiles, and they are also pretty potent. While they can directly hurt and even kill your enemies, these arrows are primarily designed to blow things up, as the name says. Combining them with other volatile objects increase their explosive power, making them more effective in damaging or even completely destroying targets nearby. If you or someone else has recently thrown or shot gas all entire arrows or gaseous orbs in an area, for example, shooting an explosive arrow towards the area affected by those projectiles or orbs will create big explosions, hurting anything or anyone close to them. This makes these arrows helpful in certain combat situations. Another purpose and maybe the main one, at least for me because that's the reason why I use explosive arrows, is to crack meteors, the meteor shells, as they will instantly explode upon contact with the meteor shell, opening it so you can mine the star metal or inside. And it's a pretty reliable alternative to many other ways of cracking these meteors. It usually works all the time. If you are really lucky, you may find these explosive arrows while exploring the map, but very rarely. Now, one of the main things players use dragon powder for is to craft explosive jars, and this is why dragon powder is so important in PvP, especially. The explosive jars are the most popular kind of explosives in Conan Exiles and also the most popular way of raiding other players unless I'm very outdated on this, just informing you that you can use an explosive jar as a way of raiding other players' bases by placing the jars near the structures like foundations or walls and igniting them so they can explode, but make sure to step back in the meantime to prevent your character from getting hurt or even killed depending on the character's health points. To ignite an explosive jar, interact with it by opening the radial menu You can also use projectiles, throw any kind of orbs at it,
push the jars, place them nearby far sources. Sometimes it works to make them explode, other times just doesn't work, but be careful with this. Use torches to light up the fuse, whatever you prefer. Depending on the structure's sturdiness, one or more explosive jars may be needed to cause noticeable damage to it or even to completely destroy it, okay? So whenever you go to raid someone else's base, make sure to bring multiple jars, not only one because that's gonna be very risky and you have to go back home and craft more. Always bring two or more jars with you, at least. The more you bring, the more chances you have of entering inside your opponent's base and looting their belongings. Also, I suggest you to bring a repair hammer to check how much damage you have done so far to someone else's structures. An explosive jar will damage anyone or anything in its explosion radius, so use it wisely and at the right time to avoid wasting your jars because they are not cheap to make. You cannot find jars while exploring the map, you always have to crack this thing. Explosive jars can also be used to crack the star metal meteor shells instead of the other alternatives and you can also mine the ore with your current tool. Explosive jars can also be used as a crafting ingredient of other items such as demon fire barrages for your trebuchet so you can use them as ammunition while trying to destroy another player's structures. You can also create traps exploding in vapor ones with explosive jars and a few other resources. With the addition of golems to the game, different attachments to build them were added as well. The explosive garden head is one of them. If you build a golem with this part, it will explode once your golem dies as a defense system. You can only craft this head with the help of an explosive jar and a few other ingredients. By the way, you can use your golem with an explosive guardian hat to crack meteor shells. Okay, the <laughs> explosive hat will roll and eventually explode within a couple seconds. Why would you kill your golem? Or why would your golem die nearby a meteor shell? Nobody knows. Avoid using your golem in this situation. There are multiple other alternatives to get star metal, okay? <laughs> You can unlock the explosive jar recipe when you reach level 35 and learn the explosives knowledge. And then you can uncraft explosive jars with one dragon powder, an earthenware jug and five tar. Something different you can do with dragon powder is couple of armor sets, the Godbreaker and Shield Godbreaker armor, which are some of the strongest armor sets out there if you are playing in the Exile Lands, because these are only exclusive to this map. You have to complete the War Maker Sanctuary dungeon before you can make them, however. After you learn the recipe for these armor sets, in the final boss room you can interact with one of the things there to unlock these armor sets together with the rusted one. 
you have to make sure to craft all the pieces of the rusted armor at an improved campaign or garrison armorer's bench beforehand since you need these set pieces as crafting ingredients to help you make the Godbreaker or the chill Godbreaker armor sets later. Together with the rusted armor pieces you'll need some alchemical base, armor scraps and dragon powder. Armor scraps are also obtained inside of the Warmaker Sanctuary dungeon, don't forget them, okay? You may have to come back there to get more of these scraps. Both Godbreaker and Chill Godbreaker armor pieces offer you a significant defense against enemy attacks and are heavily resistant to harsh temperatures. The Godbreaker for cold weather while the Chill Godbreaker for warm weather. They are pretty sturdy. Dragon Powder is very important in sorcery, by the way. There will be a point you have to keep upgrading the Tome of Correct until you reach the final level of it and to upgrade it to the 13th level inside of your Tomaturgy Bench you will need 10 Dragon Powder units and 20 Black Blood as well as 1 Sorcerer Spell Page. Black Blood can be obtained from the Child of Jill and the Harpies. Child of Jill bosses and overall those giant birds can be killed inside those caves at the snow in the very eastern side on the Exile Lands and then eventually if you are playing in the Isle of Sipta map you can find Harpies and Child of Jill in two vaults in the northeastern side of the Isle. Learning sorcery is always necessary to perform rituals that teach you spells and some crafting recipes. The 13th level of the Tome of Korak will allow you to learn how to summon the Abyssal Armor from the Circle of Power, which is something that you wanna look into. If you are trying to get star metal from the few things that I told you, you can also try demon fire orbs which don't really require dragon powder to be crafted, they require a few other things. Also you can try to use the mask called spell and don't need the mining tool to get the star metal because the mask coal will not only crack the meteor shells from all the meteors in the surrounding area, well pretty much near you, but also will gather the star metal. The Maskal spell, as the wiki says, has the same harvesting power as a common pickaxe. And then you can also use the explosive jars. However, I will go with my top choice, which is the explosive arrows. Because you only use, don't forget this, you only use one dragon powder for 10 explosive arrows. 10 arrows of this kind will allow you to gather plenty star metal. Use the best pick that you have to gather this kind of ore and maybe you'll spend a while without gathering star metal again. For me it's been profitable this way. Or eventually what I do is to try obtaining demon fire orbs from loot chests or from looting human NPCs for example. I don't usually craft these, because I can also find them. So I usually collect them until I'm able to use them to crack star metal meteors, so I save up resources doing this way. If you want to use the Maskal spell, it's up to you, which is also a nice choice to harvest rare resources, for example. Still, I'll go for the other alternatives that I told you, explosive arrows or demon fire orbs. Now if you want to raid someone else's base you have a ton of choices, you have the trebuchet, you can use also your weapons but it takes ages uh, together with the pets so that's not a big choice if you want to do that. You can use also orbs, you can throw orbs at someone else's base but that takes a long time too. The most viable is really the explosive jars in my opinion. Also you have the lightning storm spell, which is an offensive spell. It has a random chances of just uh, dropping lightning bolts against 
someone else's structures and everything else around. If you want to use explosives that don't require dragon powder, the demon fire orb, you can combine demon fire orb with the grease orb, for example, to increase the effect of the explosion or the fire. It's pretty good actually. You can also throw another sort of orbs together with the other kinds of orbs, such as pretty much a demon fire to see what happens, okay? Much heavier impact towards something or someone, which is cool. And crafting, is it the only way of getting dragon powder? Well, you should only rely on crafting as the only way of getting dragon powder because it's such a rare item, okay? A rare crafting ingredient. If you are extremely lucky, there should be like a special point of interest where you can find uh, these loot chests or these bosses, whatever enemies that may drop dragon powder, but the chances should be so low, so always rely on the crafting for getting dragon powder in bulk and always a more effective way of obtaining it. Goodbye and thanks for watching.